Hey, Pat McCardle back for another episode of Shop Talk, where today we're going to be talking about these cutaway engines and showing off the difference between what a side-by-side -side thousand and what an ATV thousand looks like. Let's dive in to get a little, little details on what each one's like. All right, so we got some older cutaways in the shop today that are close to the vehicles that I have behind me. So this one's really actually a 900, and this one's really actually an 850, but from an architecture point of view, they basically match the machines they're in front of. So let's start out over here on the ATV side of the world and look at some of the things that are maybe unique on this twin cylinder ATV architecture, all right? So one of the ones you see right in front of me is this rubber coated starter and solenoid. So this is actually different that the solenoid's mounted right on top of the starter and it's got this rubber coating to be able to seal everything up. So when you're taking your ATV through uh, you know, wet terrains or moisture, you don't have to worry about getting water inside that starter. Um, speaking of water, when you look at the end of this crankshaft, this is actually the water pump located at the uh, end of the charging system. So not only does that help pump and circulate water through the engine, uh, but it also helps cool the stator down so we can get you know, big charging output off the uh, end of this motor. Now being that this is a parallel twin, one of the unique things is about these is the sound of this engine. And if you look at the piston and, and uh, firing order, this thing actually runs at a 270 degree firing order, which makes it sound a little more like a V-twin than a classic parallel twin like our old maybe uh, you know, 800s did that had a 180 uh, firing order. So that unique sound that you get out of the ATV engine is actually based on the firing order or where these pistons are moving in relation to one another, that it's 270 degrees of crank rotation between the firing of each, each of the two on here. Um, other you know, nice novel things about this engine, if we spin it around a little bit, um, we do actually have uh, dual throttle bodies on this. So this is the old mechanical actuated version. Uh, the machine behind me actually has electronic throttle. So you might hear us call that ETC, electronic throttle control, drive by wire. All those mean the same thing where instead of having a cable come in that's directly pulling on this little cam and lever, uh, we've actually got a motor that's actuating that. And we'll see that on the side by side engine in just a minute. The other thing that's very unique on this ATV application is you'll see that there's not a snout coming off the end of the crankshaft to bolt the clutch directly to it. These, uh, these sportsmen actually have a little intermediate uh, to be able to move that clutch down in a way so that we can package two clutches behind this to be able to run the crankshaft north to south on this vehicle uh, instead of side to side so you get that nice narrow uh, packaging which makes it easy to fit uh, and not have your hips splayed out on the uh, sportsman. Um, now getting up to the top of the motor, some of the things that are the same on here, um, this is still our classic ProStar configuration, so fuel injected engine, you know, you got one injector per cylinder going right up down into the intake port here. Uh, we've got uh, dual over, or a single, sorry, overhead cam with two valves, uh, or four valves per cylinder, so two on the intake side, two on the exhaust side. So it is a, an eight valve motor, but a single cam uh, driven off the top of the engine here. Um, and overall, this thing is designed for low end grunt and doing work, um, but it still puts out in the 1000 cc trim in the ATV an impressive 89 horsepower. So when you look at the power weight on the ATV, these, uh, these engines really are quite nice. Um, and the displacement on this is actually uh, right around 952 cc. So a little bit different than the side by side motor. So jumping in, we've actually got a really old cutaway uh, from an old Ranger 900, but the architecture of this uh, twin cylinder side-by-side -side engine basically matches what we've got on this uh, Trail S1000 right behind me here. Um, big differences over the ATV that you see, um, let me spin this around for you guys, um, but this is actually a twin cam motor. Um, so you can see there's two camshafts on the top, uh, one for the intake, one for the exhaust, still four valves per cylinder. Um, you'll notice that the water pump isn't sitting outside the stator cover here, so this is more of a conventional architecture. Uh, and if you look at the starter motor itself, you'll see there's no solenoid on top. It's a sealed starter motor assembly uh, where one cable hooks up to go back to an, an offline start solenoid. Um, and this one has actually got this uh, sprague clutch in it, so there's a one-way clutch in this uh, crank train uh, for the, uh, the starter here. Uh, that's a little different than the pole chute style that's on the uh, ATV engine. Uh, still a capable charging system here. We've got 560, 660, and 900 watt variants that will package into this, this series of engine. Um, and overall, this is kind of our more modern design. We've actually gone you know, one or two generations ahead of this one, but from a base architecture point of view, you know, the fuel injection, um, we've got a uh, electronic throttle on this particular motor. So this one's actually kind of got a cutaway that you can see. So this little gear at the top is connected to the uh, electric motor here. As that spins, uh, it actually actuates this bigger gear. And that's what actually ends up opening the butterfly inside the throttle body. Hopefully you guys can see that as I 
you know, rotate that a little bit. Um, but single throttle body feeding air into both cylinders uh, on this engine as well as the one in the Razor behind me. So, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, similar setup in that regard. Still got injectors going into the intake ports, uh, still fuel injected in that regard. We have changed controllers a couple times over the years. Um, but overall, super capable power plant. The version that's in the Razor right behind me puts out 100 horse. So overall, you know, we've got a great twin architecture for our side-by-sides. We've got a great twin architecture for our ATVs. And in case you thought they were the same, there are a few key differences between how these two things operate, you know, what they look like. And a big one that you see on this side is that the uh, clutch actually goes right on this taper. So the drive clutch would be here. You know, the driven clutch would be up on the transmission and the belt would be running between these on this particular uh, razor setup that we've got behind me. So again, there are some differences in the real vehicle. This, you know, intake plenum would be a different material, but still, you know, kind of one design between the throttle and the intake ports. Um, but overall, you know, great engines for their applications. The ATV one packages nicely in that smaller uh, straddle type vehicle versus the, the slightly taller engine we've got here that can fit, you know, behind the, uh, underneath the box in the back of a side-by-side. -side. But overall, we've got some cool engine technology. Just figured we'd show off and answer that question of, you know, what are some of the differences between them? Make sure you guys, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you want to see on the next episode of Shop Talk.